Hi guys, this is Shelly. Today I'm going to be making a loaf of um, honey wheat bread. And it's very simple to make and I just wanted to show you how easy it is to make. Um, I make, or not make, I actually grind my own flour. So that's the flour that I will be using as uh, partially in this. And uh, grinding flour is actually very easy. It sounds more challenging than it really is that so you just get a little machine the machine does it you buy the wheat berries you grind your own wheat the advantage to that is that the flour is more wholesome it has the wheat germ it has the bran it has everything with it now this loaf of honey wheat that we're going to be making today is a combination actually of all purpose and my fresh ground whole wheat uh whole wheat flour so in here right now, I have two cups of all-purpose flour. I have two cups of my wheat flour. Um, if you're interested in seeing how I do that, um, just uh, hit me in a comment below and, and I'll do a video with that. Um, it's, it's real simple. I'll show you the machine that I use. I've had much success with it. It's been no problem whatsoever. You can use it as well for legumes, beans, you know, variety of things. So two cups of all purpose, two cups of whole of uh, whole wheat flour. I also have two teaspoons of salt in here. And in this cup here, I have one and a half cups of uh, warm water. To this, I'm going to add just a simple teaspoon of uh, sugar. Actually, what I'm going to add first is my yeast. And most people don't do this. They do it the other way around. But... I actually find that if I add the yeast, the sugar takes the yeast down to the bottom and it it's, uh, blooms a lot faster. I'm going to use two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast into one and a half cups of warm water. So there's my two and the quarter. And to this, I'm just going to add a teaspoon of sugar. and. The sugar will actually feed the yeast along with the warm water. We're gonna leave that for a few minutes until it starts to bloom. Now, I actually didn't have to do this because I use the fast active yeast. So typically when you use the fast active yeast, you just add it in with your flour and you continue on with the recipe with the liquids and everything else. But uh, I just wanted to show you the second option if you use traditional yeast, which a lot of people still do. There we are. And we're just going to wait for this to, to foam up, let us know it's ready to go, it's active, and we'll put it in here. So in the meantime, what I'm going to add in with this flour is I'm going to add is three tablespoons of olive oil and three tablespoons of honey. Um, I, I like to buy our local honey, support local as much as I can, but any kind of honey will do. And I'm just going to give this a quick little, um, little beat around to get it started just to mix it up. I have the dough hook on. Perfect, that's plenty. I just wanted to stir up the flowers a bit and the salt. So let's proceed. Three tablespoons of this olive oil. You can use any kind of oil that you like. If you have vegetable, if you have canola. Um, I absolutely, actually prefer to use avocado oil if I have it, but I don't have any on hand. So, also going to add three tablespoons of honey right in with the oil, flour, the whole nine yards. Don't have to, this, this recipe is so easy. Particularly if you have a stand mixer, dump it all in, let it go, enjoy your bread. There we are. And you'll notice how easy the honey comes out because we use the oil first with the spoon. So the honey slides right out of the spoon. Our yeast is starting to come together a bit. It's foaming a bit. It's letting me know that it's active. So it's good yeast. Um, I'm not going to wait for it to finish foaming. You can wait until the whole top is, is, is foaming. If you're using traditional yeast, you really should do that. Wait until it's got a, a covering of, of foam and the yeast is all going. There we go. Add that in. We're going to pop this up, put it on, and it's going, and that is it for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this go. I'm gonna let the beater do its thing. 
Then we're going to come back, and this is something I like to do, you don't have to do it at all, but I like to add some butter. There's something else I forgot to mention, I'm very sorry. Uh, if, let me turn this off to tell you. There's something else that I forgot to mention. Add it in with this flour and the salt and the oil and honey and all of that. I also have what's called vital gluten, vital wheat gluten. And that's like a bread conditioner. And it's because I use my own ground flour that tends to be quite heavy uh, because it does have all the wheat germ and all the bran. This vital wheat gluten will actually um, enhance the bread, soften it, give it a little bit more airiness. So into all of this, I have added three tablespoons of the vital wheat gluten. If you are using just regular whole wheat flour, regular uh, white flour, you, you don't need this. Feel free to use it if you have it. If you've never used it before, you may want to give it a try. You don't have to buy as big a package as I have here. You can get it in much smaller uh, packages. And it makes a world of difference with your bread, particularly, as I said, if you grind your own flours, okay? So I'm going to let this uh, beat. I'm going to bring it together. Once the dough all comes together, I'm going to let it go for about five minutes on low, just stirring. And that way... I don't have to do the kneading it's doing it for me so I just wanted to show you guys what the what it looks like now it's still quite tacky uh, but it's only gone for a few minutes I also wanted to share with you that I had to add more water in mine uh, something I did that I probably I know better but because I used my own whole wheat flour it's it's a lot thicker it's a lot heavier and more uh, grainy than what you would buy in the store. So I typically add a half a cup less flour than the recipe calls for, and then just slowly add it in um, as it, it's needed as the, the dough mixes. Uh, in this case, I just dumped it all in. And so as a result, I had to add more water. But if you're not going to be grinding your own flour, just follow the recipe as, as I told you when we started. But I just wanted to share with you um, what I had to do because of my, uh, my experience with, with the flour that I grind myself. I also want to show you what flour looks like when you do grind it, grind it yourself. I want to show you this up, up close. If, if you were to sift this right now, a lot of uh, brand would come out of it but uh, this is it like I said if you're interested in uh, seeing how I do that just leave a comment below and I'll show you okay guys so this is the final step for this bread you don't need to add this butter but uh, I find that it just adds such an incredible lift of flavor uh, the olive oil is is fantastic on its own but I just like to add maybe two tablespoons of butter at the very end. I'm going to turn this on again, add the butter in, and let it go. And this here will actually uh, just break up on its own as it's beating in. This makes one loaf of the bread a nine by five. Uh, I have my pan already uh, greased, and I put a piece of parchment in it, and then I just greased a bit on top of that as well. Okay, so the butter we added is incorporated in. And now I'm just going to take this out, put it on my work surface. It's still tacky as you can see, which is what I like because as I said, the whole wheat is, uh, absorbs a lot of the liquid. So if it's not tacky, the bread will be dry. Okay, just to let you know, make sure that it's tacky. Just shape it into a loaf. I'm going to actually, I should have planned better and taken this. I don't add additional flour when I, uh, when I shape my bread. And again, I don't do that um, because I don't want the additional flour drying it out. If I have to do anything, I'll add a little bit of oil to my hands. And that's it. Here we go. Just going to shape it into the loaf. And we'll drop it into our pan. Because I am using the fast, fast acting uh, yeast, uh, this only gets one rise and goes straight into the oven. If you were using traditional yeast, you would have to let this rise until it doubled. 
about, I would say an hour and a half. Then you take it down, deflate it with your fingertips, and then you would shape it into whatever you're using, whether it's rolls or, uh, or loaf. Because I'm using the fast acting yeast, as I had said, it only has to do one rise and then goes into the oven. So I shape it immediately. I don't have to wait. I'll let you see what this looks like when it comes out of the oven and after we've cooled and sliced into it. When it comes out of the oven, you have the option you can either put some butter on the top of it while it's still nice and hot, or you can just leave it crispy uh, or crusty as I like to do. So thanks so much and we'll see you back here shortly. So as I mentioned, um, I'm going to now put this bread to rise and I'll, I'll find some place warm to put it. And I will also cover it up with a piece of saran and I'll lightly um, grease the saran on the side that's going to come in contact with the bread. And then I'll cover that up with a dish towel, a clean dish towel, and uh, leave that until it's uh, about an inch and a half, maybe two inches over the pan. And then I'll pop it in a 350 oven and I'll leave it in there for 20, 25 minutes, okay? It's all finished. The internal temperature on the bread is 190, which I actually relied on because the bread is so dense with the uh, with the whole wheat. I did use a thermometer uh, to test it to be sure that it was done. The other thing you can do is, which I grew up doing, is just take it out of the pan and uh, flip it over, tap the bottom. If the bottom sounds hollow, it's done. The other thing I did was I actually dusted it with flour instead of oil while it was rising, and that would give me a, a uh, more of a crust, a hard crust while it was baking. So overall, it's done. And to put it together from start to finish, as I told you, probably will take you like maybe, maybe 10, 12 minutes. And that includes five minutes for mixing. So thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next one. God bless.